Hey guys, welcome to this week's tips and tricks video. Today we are going to experiment with pan pastels and see what they are capable of doing. I've also taken the opportunity to experiment using different papers so we can see the different effects that it has. So the first type of paper we're using is the Fabriano Artistico hot pressed paper, watercolor paper. The second one is the Fisher 400 sanded paper. And the third one is the Mitant pastel paper. So the first paper is very smooth, there's no texture on here at all. And the second paper actually feels a bit like sandpaper, like a very, very light grain sandpaper. And then the pastel paper has quite a texture to it. And it almost has like a cotton kind of feel. Um, and what we're going to do is on the first part of each of these types of paper, I'm going to just use a regular piece of printing paper to see how easy it is to transfer an image using a pan pastel. The second one, we are going to experiment with the effects of the Micador workable map fixative and how it's, if we're just gonna have a play around and then when we layer it, we're gonna see if this fixative works okay on these different kinds of paper. We're gonna do the same thing with the textured fixative. And finally, in the last section, we're gonna experiment with the zested pencil blend to see what effects that has when you blend on this paper on top of pan pastels. So we're gonna have pan pastels as a bottom layer, then we are going to seal it, and then we are going to layer with pencils, and then we are going to mix with solvents. Okay, so let's start with the first part. All I'm going to do on the back of this piece of paper is, oh, and on the left here, I've got a couple of sponges. So these, the brand of these sponges is Soft. So S-O-F-F-T is the brand. And these are the best things to use to apply your pan pastel to a paper. Um, they almost force the, pastel, the pan pastel to adhere to the paper. Whereas if you try and use a brush, it's just going to brush off the surface of the paper. So I'm just going to take any, any pan pastel sponge. And then the color I'm using is Burnt Sienna Shade. So I've got three colors here that I'm going to use. I'm not going to draw anything fancy. We just want to experiment and see what these things can do. So these three colors I thought were a good three colors to combine. Anyways, so using the Burnt Sienna Shade. I am going to just apply the shade on the back of the regular printing paper, just like that. Not, you don't need a lot. And then I'm going to place it over the top of the section that I'm working on. And then using a sculpting tool, I usually like to, to etch the image onto the drawing paper. So I don't have a particular image here to transfer, but if you were tracing something, you could just trace over it like this. Now I cannot see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so there we go, we put a little flower. So there's still enough on there, so let's see how it adheres to the Fisher 400 paper. It's very very light and I did press quite firmly on that one and then on the Mitons pastel paper and that came out much much brighter so when you are transferring image onto sanded paper you're going to have to press quite firmly so even if I, let's say that I adhere a bit more. And then try and transfer another little flower and I'm going to press even firmer. So I'm pressing really hard, I'm almost going through my print. And that came out a little bit darker. So just something to keep in mind, if you're going to transfer an image onto your sanded paper, you're going to have to keep checking. Or as soon as you've transferred your image, go over it again with a pencil to just bring your outline back out again. So the outlines don't come up as clear on the Fisher 400 paper. 
They do come out clearly on the Fabriano Artistico Hot Press watercolor paper and they do come out clearly on the pastel paper. So the great thing about using a pan pastel, pastel to transfer your outline is if you make any mistakes, it is really, really easy to erase them. So erasing on sanded paper will eat through your eraser. But there it is, it's very, very easy to erase when you're using a pan pastel. I find I don't like using graphite to transfer to transfer any images because I find that sometimes the graphite can really stick to your paper and then it doesn't erase as nicely. Um, whereas pan pastel is like sort of putting chalk on your paper, so it's much easier to remove if you have chalk on your paper. Okay, so now let's go on to adding a layer into these sections. So I am going to use the light ones. I'm going to use orange tint. I'll take a clean sponge. Also, if you, you can keep using the same sponges all the time. All you have to do is take a piece of pan, uh, uh, paper towel like this and then just wipe off any excess. And then you can use that again on another color. But just to make sure, I am going to use a different, a clean sponge. And then I'm going to apply a layer of this color into this block. Do the same over here. So the sanded paper it just feels like the color just glues straight onto it. Whereas the watercolor paper, it's not as pigmented as that one. And then let's see with the pastel paper. That adheres to it beautifully as well. Now if I had to keep layering on here, so let's add a little bit of the orange. If I had to keep layering on here, it will eventually start moving around. So it wouldn't be able to handle as many layers anymore. So, and look how easy it is to rub it off. So I'm using the clean end of the sponge here to sort of make a nice transition but it does rub off rub off real easy so it needs to be sealed if you don't want that to happen so your first layer is going to be very very light now if I had to do the same over here it really has a nice smooth transition and you can really feel you can feel the sanded paper just almost grabs it like glue pastel paper see the same thing the more you sort of add the more it moves the color around so you need to seal it this paper you really don't have to seal it it looks pretty amazing okay so I'm going to do the same over here because we are going to be experimenting with two different types of fixative for these two so let's use the orange again so I'm going to use the same colors so that we make sure that we can clearly see the differences if there are any differences with using the two different fixatives so again I'm going to use the orange tint I'll do the same again for the bottom. Just cleaning my sponge off on a paper towel.
So one thing you cannot do is you cannot apply liquid solvent on top of pan pasta directly. I'll show you what happens when you do. So I'm just taking a brush, number two round Teflon brush, and I'm gonna dip it into the zested pencil blend. And when you try and blend, it's just gonna turn the powder into chunky bits. It doesn't blend it very smooth. So if we use the solvent on the sanded paper, Sanded paper just absorbs it. Although that's, it, you'd have to use a lot. So the sanded paper just seems to absorb it. And I'm get, I'm picking up a lot off of the brush. It's like I'm picking up all the powder, and it turns into a bit of a muddy feeling on the brush. And then if I use it on the pastel paper, it just absorbs it straight away like a, a paper towel. And you can see here that it sort of picks it up off the paper. So on the water, the hot pressed watercolor paper, it, it doesn't go as smooth as that. So it tends to create streaks and it picks up a lot of the pan pastel. On the Fisher 400 standard paper, it absorbs it. Um, although it seems to actually work okay. It does absorb it. But it does seem like you could blend it in like that if you really wanted to. But when it blends in that smoothly already, you wouldn't have the need to blend with solvent. So there's no point because the idea about blending with solvent is to take away the texture of the paper and to allow the pigment of the color to appear brighter. So the main reason you only want to use solvent when you're using colored pencils. So the idea with solvent is that we want to apply pencils over the top of pastels and then we want to blend the pencils in on top of the pastels. You wouldn't need to blend pan pastels with a solvent because there's no point. Pan pastels already gives you a very smooth result, especially because you're using those soft sponges. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry, but since we are depending on drying time for a few things, I'm gonna cover this so that we can spray the top part with the Micador Matte Fixative. Now that that's protected, I'm going to shake the bottle of the Micador Matte Fixative. And then from a distance of about 20 centimeters, to do the same for the bottom section except I'm going to use the textured fix it off by brush and pencil
Okay, so the top one that we use, the um, Mikador Matte Workable Fixative, that one's already dry. It's only been about seven minutes. This one with the textured fixative hasn't completely dried yet on the sanded paper section. And it doesn't look like it's dried yet on the pastel paper either. So that one does take a longer time to dry. I also find that I can actually see the texture of the, um, the brush and pencil texture of fixative. It, when it sprays, it almost creates tiny, tiny little bubbles. So it's placing that extra texture onto the paper. And this one, it sort of has a little bit of a rounded look there because of I think I just sprayed a little too much on that section but it's still drying and it's fine and then the solvent has dried on the left side and on the right side and it's still seeing I don't know if it's wet or if it almost created like a stained look in the Fisher 400 sanded paper section I'm not sure but um, anyways we're gonna see how these layer some more or what happens when we decide to add an additional layer with the pan pastels so I'm going to start with the top section since that's dry not with the middle section yet because that is still drying so I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to use the orange tint and I'm going to apply a layer over here And that adheres to it much better. That feels great too. Oh, and look, the pigment even increases on top of the pastel paper. So it does help having a workable fixative between your layers because it just gives your next layer something to adhere to and it adds more pigment and color oh, oopsie. so now I'm going to add some of the orange and that's created a nice smooth transition So look how much smoother that looks already. So adding an additional layer makes a big, big difference um, with the fixative in between. Okay. We'll give that a little bit of time to dry a bit longer. Um, I'm going to see what happens if I add another layer onto these bottom sections where we just tested the solvent. Let's see if we can just get it nice and smooth again so that we can seal that as well and then apply colored pencils over the top and then blend with solvent and see what it looks like. So you can still see the stains come through a little bit, especially on the Fabriano Artistico Hot Press paper. But that is okay. Okay. I'm going to add the tint to these two. Okay, that applies very nicely. So this is the fixative we have, the, the textured fixative that we sprayed on here. And let's add some of the orange.
Okay, so I think it's safe to say that either text, uh, that either fixative that you're going to use, whether it's a matte fixative or a textured fixative, both of them are going to work just as great on all three of these kinds of papers. There's really not much difference. The only thing is that I didn't let that dry quick enough, so now that color has just created a sort of shape over there because I wasn't patient enough to let it dry. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a fixative to this bottom section here and then I'm going to apply colored pencils over the top and then I'm going to blend it with solvent and we'll see what it's going to look like. Okay, so I'm going to apply some red pencils over the oranges, starting with the red oil-based pencil. I am using a medium pressure. I'm not pressing hard, but I'm also not pressing as soft as I can. So the Sanded paper really feels quite nice, but you can see the texture of the paper. You can also see how much it grinds into your pencil. Because it's obviously a sanded surface, it's going to eat away at your pencil core pretty quickly. And then the pastel paper, you'll see the texture. So that, this paper is really smooth, the Fabriano watercolor paper is very smooth so you don't see much texture. This one you see the texture of the sanded surface which is like a very a subtle texture but you can still, you can see it. And then this one you can see the texture of the pastel paper which has quite a bit of texture. So that was the oil based pencil. Now I'm going to use the wax based pencil. wax based pencil because it's got a softer core applies really smooth on the watercolor paper and the oil based pencil is a much harder core so that's why you have to you'd use the oil based pencils for detailing in that so you don't get as soft a look unless you press softer then the sanded paper Again, you can see the texture. And then the pastel paper. Also, you can see the texture. I seem to be getting a bit of a shine off of the pastel paper. And I'm not sure if that is because of the fixative. Excuse me. And then finally, the pastel pencil. It's got like real scratchy bits in this. So let's see. It's just this brand. Uh, the pastel pencil doesn't seem to want to adhere to this paper at all. See the sanded paper? Very, very bright. And on the pastel paper, The fixative seems to make it move around. It's got a real, um, it's got a real shine to it. It's very, very shiny. So it just does not want to stick to the surface of the fixative that we put on here. And it seems to be doing the same thing on the watercolor paper. But because the sanded paper has a is sanded. It's really gluing to the pencil. The, core, the pastel pencil core really adheres to the sanded paper very well. So pastel pencils on fixative just do not work. Pastel pencils and fixative layering do not work. 
So, but usually with pastels and with um, pan pastels, you, no, let me say this. With pastels, you wouldn't need to use a fixative because you use tortillions and um, little um, shapers to blend and you get a smooth, even result. Um, you could use sponges and that as well. It's, it is a bit easier to blend. You'd only really want to use a liquid solvent when you're using oil and wax-based pencils. You wouldn't use a liquid solvent when you are using a pastel pencil. So it sort of makes sense that you wouldn't have to use a liquid fixative if you're using pastel pencils either. Okay, so now we are going to blend that with the fixative, I mean with the solvent, and see if it blends in smoothly. it does so pencils if you're gonna blend on top of pan pastels this is how you do it you would first seal it with a layer of fixative and then you would blend with a solvent so it needs to be sealed with fixative first before you can apply pencils over the top which you would blend with a solvent and obviously pan pastel uh, pastel pencils you wouldn't blend with solvent so the sanded paper it almost feels like it turns muddy so you can blend with the solvent but it's almost like the the solvent it doesn't give it as smooth a result you probably get a smoother result if you had to Okay, with the oil-based pencil, you don't get a smooth result, but with a wax-based pencil, you should get a smoother result. And I'll show you something in a second. So, let's just quickly, so let's take, for instance, the oil-based pencils. Let's experiment on this piece over here. So, I have the oil-based pencil. Look if you apply enough layers how smooth that looks. That looks very smooth. So you wouldn't need to use a solvent. Then when you use a wax based pencils, a pencil, it doesn't look as smooth as that. You see the texture of the paper so you have to blend it. Now if you decide that you wanted to blend the oil pencil a bit more, you can blend it with a sponge. It does lift a bit off, but then you can just add another layer if you need to. And you can make it look smooth again. Whereas you cannot blend the wax base section like that. It just brings more of the texture of the paper out. So if you're using wax base pencils on sanded paper, you do need to blend it with a solvent if you want to get a smoother look like that okay and then with um, pastel pencils you'd probably want to use a shaper to blend that and then so pastel shapers are made for this and then that'll give it a nice smooth look And then let's blend on the excuse me, let's blend on the pastel paper. So that works okay. So that's the oil-based pencil that blends nicely. And then the wax-based pencil that blends quite nicely as well. 